Space between. What a day. Mm. Welcome to the Space Between podcast. Hi. Where we talk about the space between life and art, passion and business, what's happening now and what's happening next. I'm Pat Shand. I'm Amy Shand. Oh, what a day. I'm tired. Yeah, Pat, Pat went out of the house today. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of amazing that that's the bar of what makes me tired. Pat went out of the house today. Well, you work from home, so it's different for you. It's true. I've uh... And you went out of the house, sorry, today no, yeah. and was it yesterday or the day before that you had a signing? Oh, Saturday, yeah. I had a signing so a on Saturday days. at Fourth World. I should have uh, I should have told you guys about the signing on the last podcast, but I didn't. Um, but hey, for those who did come, thank you so much. I love you. Uh, but yeah, um, today, and I'll get back to this, but yeah, it's so um, it's such a thing that writers do, writers who just work from home, uh, that we kind of get in the mode of just existing within the four walls, you know? Yeah. Um, like I was just talking to Amy today about <laughs> about how I don't wake up to my alarm at all anymore. <laughs> that shit doesn't work for me. Um, I mean, I've changed my alarm to to different sounds. I have one alarm that plays uh, "Bodak Yellow" by Cardi B. The music ones don't work for you. I thought it would get me more amped because I remember um, the most amped I've ever woken up, the most awake I've ever been in my life was. Back in San Diego. That was a fluke. When Amy and I were first mm, together. Oh, my God. <laughs> we, we were in in her bed, right? And I, I it takes enough for me to get to, to wake up in my bed. Mm-hmm. But you played, um, Amy played to wake me up, Drake's 0 to 100, right? Yes. So that song starts like this. Burner, fuck being nothing chill shit, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, I woke up to the burner. I started rapping the first bars. <laughs> that was, yeah, that's the quickest you ever woken up. I was ready for that shit. <laughs> so, I thought um, my plan was, what is the most hype song on my phone right now? I thought Cardi B's Bodak Yellow Aggressive, right? And Takashi 6 ix Stupid, Real Aggressive. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work. It doesn't. I'm you out. need like the foghorn one. Foghorn leghorn. Oh, oh, like like yeah, ugh. the real one. Imagine though. Yeah, but that's the only thing I think that's gonna work for you. Um, but imagine, you know. <sighs> I don't know. Anyway, so today, uh, what drove me out of the house today wasn't work this time. I had to take our cat Wesley to the vet. He's been um. I'm not sure, you know, you guys might see him later on. He tends to come up on the couch on the live stream. But for those listening who have not seen the cat ever, Wesley is a big, beautiful Maine Coon. And he has big, fluffy ears uh, and a big head. Um, so it's been alarming to see this gigantic, lovable cat. He's been shaking his head. It's like, do you know when a dog is wet and comes in and they do that super fast head shake, right? It's that, but he's he, he's dry. <laughs> Yeah, it's like he's he is he was shaking his head a bunch like he he had like an itch that he couldn't scratch. Exactly. So Exactly. Yeah. Pat took him to the vet while I was at work today. It's true. I I couldn't deal with it cuz my plan was um I had different plans today. Uh but I couldn't take watching him like that. I know how it feels to like have an itch that you can't scratch like say I remember um when I had my wisdom teeth taken out and I was in the bed, I wanted so badly to just go and, and like eat normal food and like scratch a piece of my mouth that hurt and I couldn't do it. So Wes is, he's just a cat. He doesn't know, you know, he, yeah. he doesn't know why he feels that way. So I just wanted to find out what was going on. And yeah, it turns out he has like a bit of an ear infection. Yeah. So yeah. that's what was uh, bothering him, but now he's on medication, so that's good. Indeed. So yeah, but I, I was there, I, I fell asleep there. I was I was at the vet the whole day. I woke up to my snores at the vet. That's rude. Imagine. That's pretty rude. It was <laughs> probably similar to when I'm in the airplane with you. Oh, I'm sure. And there's people around. Oh, thank you. 
about the cat. Yeah, Ke- Kevin Cuffy comments in the live stream. No, no, Kevin Cuff, sorry, comments in the live stream. I hope your cat's okay. But, um, yeah, so you fell asleep in the waiting room, but you were snoring. Was there a lot of people in the waiting room? No, it was, it was just me, but I saw... As I woke up to my own snore, my snore <laughs> pulled me from sleep in a way that Bodak Record Yellow could your own snore. Hey, I should do that. set it as your alarm. I should do that. Uh, I saw one of the vet techs peek out to see who the fuck was doing that. And the answer, <laughs> me. Right? Yeah. But tell, tell, tell the people how it's like when I fall asleep on the plane and I'm snoring and you're left stranded. I don't want to tell them because it makes me sound so mean. It makes you sound mean. Come, come, come back to the mic. You're a professional, okay? <laughs> when I go on the plane with Pat and he sleeps on the plane, he snores, but it just makes me anxious of the people around because I feel like they look at me like you're with him and he's snoring and I'm trying to work slash read yeah. slash sleep. Why are you not waking him? Could you do an impression of my snores? No. You can't? No. Okay. W- won't you or you physically can't? I don't think it's possible. Well, and I'm afraid to try. I'm going to try, okay? There's different ones. There's different ones? Yeah. I'll try a few, okay? There's like a, so- a quieter, mm. steady one. <clears throat> that sounds like one of them. That's, okay, I got one. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> you got to stop. Is that it? Yeah. That's it? Yeah, but this is... <laughs> This is not a good podcast right now? No. Okay, so so what was your day like? It was pretty good. You know, worked at Starbucks. And uh, only six hours, so that was nice. I like to work the shorter shifts, and I learned that I'm training someone new next week. Yeah, Amy's been um, a trainer at Starbucks, meaning mm-hmm. that uh, she is fostering the, the new generation. And people are probably thinking she's fostering the, the new generation of people who are going to misspell your name. That, that That's an ongoing joke. Hey, guess what? Say your name more simply, okay? Like No, but you know what? There's some people still at my store that just, for some reason, don't know how to spell names. Like today, someone spelled, what was it? It was like a regular name, like Janet or something. And it was spelled so weird. How do you misspell Janet? It was like J-O-J... I don't even know. They had to have misheard it. It sound. It looked like they just didn't know how to spell it, and I'm always yeah. like shocked by how people don't know how to spell. My so. thing is like, ma- make my coffee right and call me whatever the fuck you want. You mm-hmm. know, like um, I've gotten called Matt a few times on the uh, cup, but I'm okay. I'll be Matt as long as my coffee is what I want it to be. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, before we get into other stuff. I want to just breeze through some space between entertainment news. Um, just to update you who might have backed our Kickstarters or not, based on what um, we've done this year, uh, Afterglow is going to print tomorrow. And if you're not listening to this podcast live and you're either watching it on YouTube or listening to it on SoundCloud, it's gone to print. It's done. It's happening. And we've switched to an American facility. Uh, and we hope to... Um, have the book sooner than we would have if we sh- if we printed at our normal facility. Um, normally, it's taken upwards of three months to get our books to us. Uh, it's looking that Afterglow will ship to us between three to five weeks from tomorrow, uh, which pretty much means as soon as we finish shipping Prison Witch, we'll, we'll move right to shipping Afterglow. Um, and also in Prison Witch news, uh, we got pins today um i've also changed my supplier of en- enamel pins we um had they look really good they do look so good um we had someone uh do the the first pins that we've ever done for modern dread those were cool but they were very small and um it, it took so long to receive them so i tried a new recommendation from um russell nolte who produced a pin by angela odling who we actually work with a lot angela is the artist of the uh, vlog banner. Uh, So if you watch the Pat and Amy vlog, you'll you'll know her work. Um, And I saw their their pin at San Diego, and I asked Russell to give me the recommendation of where he got it done. He did, and our pins came out beautiful, and uh, we'll soon be shipping those. They're awesome. I can't wait to put them on my backpack tomorrow. Oh, hell yeah. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. And uh, on that same topic of the vlog, 
We've been on hiatus for a long time, but the vlog's coming back on Thursday this week. Yeah, I was trying to explain to a customer today, like, how we kind of, like, took a break. And then now we're, like, back. And then I was telling him that we have the vlog, which is uh, how we just, like, go around with the camera and we travel and we go on different trips and everything. Yeah. And then he was uh, asking, it, it's um, our friend Derek with the tall black iced coffee. And oh, sure, yeah. he yeah. was asking about if we video the podcast. So my question is, because I'm sort of silly, on the YouTube channel, yeah. is it going to be these videos recorded like this and then also our vlog? Yes. On the same channel? Yes. Okay, cool. I want to get into more stuff too. Like um, what I would love to do is some reaction videos. I would love to sit down with you, watch a short video, and talk about it. Me too. And I want to interview people, like our friends that are interesting. Yeah. Like even that guy that I'm talking about now, he's like in the middle of starting his own like company where he takes people on ski tours around that's cool. new york and he was like showing me his website <laughs> nice. and shit so i was yeah. like oh that's cool so maybe like later on we could interview people about like how they start up their businesses and what interests them no, and for what sure. kind of art they do and everything yeah. and you know that that we are gonna f for sure do we're, definitely we're, we're gonna be recording uh the podcast here but when we have someone to speak to a as a guest mm -hmm. we're gonna be taking it to freeport and, and record it there cool um, and we have a comment from Trevor Perry who says, I'm definitely getting the pins. Word. Shout to Trevor. And it's cool because the one that's a cat looks just, it's obviously the cat from Afterglow, but it looks like our cat Neil. So you're going to have our cat Neil. We have a comment from Kevin Cuff. I'm KMC in the place to be. I went to Hard Knocks <laughs> University. Oh, he's, he's spitting he's bars rapping. up in this thing. Um, all right. So, uh, some personal news, um, I covered what happened to Wes today. He's good. And, you know, I want to get you guys invested in our cast if you aren't already. You know, you guys follow us on the vlogs. Wesley is a guest star of the vlogs, too. So, you know what? If you see that Wesley is struggling, I better see comments from you mm -hmm. supporting Neil him. Neil oftentimes comes up here, too. Oh, yeah. Neil's always up here, yeah. And uh, the vlog, they're on. You know, like mm -hmm. we re record their adventures. Yeah. Um, and my Instagram, come on, follow me at Pat Shan to see the, the adventures of our cats. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, for now I, I want to talk a bit about something that we did between last session recording the podcast and this one. Mm -hmm. We, um, took a trip to New Jersey. Yeah, we drove, Pat drove me to New Jersey and we went to go visit a friend of ours and his name's David Elon and he's a really good photographer and a great friend and, I did a photo shoot for, it's a, I believe it's a single release on iTunes. It's on the 22nd, which happens to be the full moon this month, just so you know. That's soon, too. Mm -hmm. In a few days. That'll be um for, from the release on this, just four days, so this Friday. Right, so Friday. Yeah. And uh, so I went to his house, and he set up a studio there, and I did a photo uh, shoot and took a few photos that he's going to edit to put on the front and back of the single release on i think it's going to be on itunes and other places but it's nate walker nate walker yeah his website's natewalkermusic.com if you're interested in that i'm going to be checking it out on friday to see if it's up there i think it will be and also um for, for those who are listening click down in the description it's going to be there i'm going to have a link to nate walker's music cool. and then when the actual single drops i'm going to have a link to that single to take you to itunes there mm -hmm. Um, now, didn't you mention it's going to be a physical item too? Yeah, I think David mentioned that it's like something uh, f that I can buy a physical copy of because he was saying that the, so the theme of it is I'm holding a mirror in my hand, but in the mirror is static. And then he was saying that the CD itself is going to be just static. And then the back of it is going to be another photo. The, so. There's one image of you. I mean, the whole set is dope, but there's one image of you that really sticks out to me. It's the um, because Amy had a classic sort of outfit. It was like a retro. Yeah, and she had red theme. lips, mm -hmm. totally retro themed. And th there was one part where we smeared the lipstick. And it was a mm -hmm. straight on shot. I love that shot. <laughs> yeah, I it, love that. I love the colors of it. It looks really cool. It's like a b blue, yellow, and red. And it looks like really old school. So it's it's neat. And I love the smeared lipstick uh, look. David yeah. and I have done that twice now. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I remember last time when I was like looking back with the lipstick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I do. 
So that that one was like spookier. That was darker. Yeah. That yeah. So yeah, David is an amazing artist too, because he um not only is he a photographer, but he is an illustrator, a graphic designer. Um, Super creative too. Yeah, he used to run a, a t-shirt company. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's just amazing. So I'll also put in the link down below. Uh, all David's stuff for you to follow him as well. Yeah, maybe you can put the link to uh, his husband's show that's coming up. Oh, yeah. Week. David's husband is drag queen Pissy Miles. And so, yeah, yeah we'll put some info to that too because they always have stuff going on and it's pretty... They do th- things in the city too, so it's pretty accessible if you want to go see see like a show of theirs. I still want yeah. to. Have you been to a drag show ever? I don't think so. I've been to one... Um, and it's funny because uh, David was talking about how how his husband is trying to get into more narrative stuff. Mm-hmm. And that he wrote this this whole cool script and that he wants to start doing that and less bar stuff. And um, the only drag show I've ever been to was on one of my friend's Sweet Sixteens. We, we went to this sh- short drag show at a bar. And I remember... Um, one of my friends won won a balloon sucking contest. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, so yeah, that that, that was like that sounds like a blast. Yeah, it was fun. It was less narrative and more just audience interaction. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, oh, actually, I'm wrong. I have been to one in San Diego. You have? Yeah, I can't remember the name of the place, but it was a pretty popular place. I went there for someone's birthday party. I think that worked at Pet Kingdom when I was like 19 or 20. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I definitely... Oh, I think it's called Lips. That rings a bell. Yeah. yeah I mean, I've never been there. Yeah. But, yeah, um, de- definitely something that we've been wanting to try for a long time because um, David's cool, Pissy Miles is cool, and uh, th- there are some cool videos that if you haven't seen Pissy Live, you could still see the performance. Um, what was that song? Yeah, th- they make music videos, the Baba Duke one. Yes, yes. Baba Shook. Yes, <laughs> so good. So good. But yeah, all that stuff is going to be in the description down below. Um, But, oh yeah, I wanted to talk too. David, man, I've known David since I was so young. And I have have memories both um, heartwarming, funny, and macabre about about our our childhood. Um, One of the biggest memories for me was that David was actually the person who introduced me to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm -hmm. Uh, He brought a VHS tape over my house of episode three the witch and uh we we, uh, watched it and my mom was like are you guys sure that this is okay for you to be watching because at that point she didn't want you guys to be scared no well yeah we were young Mm -hmm. you know i was just watching goosebumps but Mm -hmm. i I got into it so much and i remember just every night just being so pumped when that day of the week came along i think it was tuesday uh to just watch buffy and um i carry that love with me until today, and that's from David. Um, but what my mom remembers about David is so fucking hilarious to me. Oh uh, my god! She, uh, we, for for one of my birthdays, we went to see Jurassic Park: The Lost World, and I must have been in fourth grade, I think. And uh, afterwards, we went out and got some pizza in the mall, and my mom was just struck by how, when she took us to the bathroom afterwards. David, without being prompt, washed his hands. <laughs> and what I get out of that story was I was a little dirty fuck, right? Like I, like she I wasn't used. I'm to not seeing in that, that story. Clearly. She wasn't used to seeing that shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. so yeah, big up to David, the young clean boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, uh, as far as just wrapping up what we've been doing, uh, we've been watching a lot of good TV recently. Yeah. Um, we binged Dollhouse pretty quickly. Yep. Joss Whedon's Dollhouse. And um, it then was, we watched a whole series. Oh, Sharp Objects. Yeah. Yep. And now we're on to The Office, which three wildly different so series. Different. So different. And yeah. for The Office, it's like a rewatch for us both up until probably the last season or two. Yeah. And you know, that that's so fun about watching TV with you is that sometimes um, I've discovered a, a lot of TV in the past that I'm showing you now. And you have, oh, here's Wesley. Feeling good, Juice? And uh, you have uh, seen shows while working on a clay that you wanted to show me, too. Right. Uh, so Dollhouse, I'd seen before. And Dollhouse is a show um, created by Joss Whedon um, that is about people who volunteer based on their personal reasons that are later on discovered uh, to get their minds wiped 
for five years, and they volunteered that their bodies and minds to be implanted with the different personalities. And people can essentially order a person for a job, a an experience, and it's this like a real, like basically a live robot. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, they're literally programmed. Mm-hmm. And um, it shows the people who who run the house working on dealing with the ethics of this. And But what it, it becomes about after a while is um, Echo, the, the lead character played by Eliza Dushku, is keeping facets of the, the personalities that she's um, taking on. And she's essentially becoming a new person, mixing all these personalities together. So who is she when she used to be someone else? And that someone else is waiting to become her again. But now Echo is a person, too. Yeah, she like evolved into her own being. It's yeah. kind of sort of similar to when um, like AI things, like artificial intelligence... There's movies about them like gaining their own intelligence sort of thing. It sort of reminds me of that because they're supposed to be harmless, but she keeps uh, like keeping parts of the yeah. personalities that she's given. And for whatever reason, she's retaining them and using them to like evolve her own uh, knowledge. Yes. You know? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is because she ends up being able to pick the parts of her that she wants to activate. So she does choose to, to evolve herself. Yeah. Yeah. She's no, it, scary. But yeah, it was a really good show. Um, Super good. It's one that... Um, but Buffy Angel and Firefly are seen more as Joss Whedon's best work. But I... I mean, t- to me, I like this as much, if not a bit more than Firefly. I really enjoyed it. I think I like it more than Firefly just because of the theme and where it's set and everything. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's just more of my interests. And Sharp Objects, I love too. Um, yeah, and Sharp Objects is one that I had seen before and Pat hadn't. Yes. And it's only eight episodes long because it's based on a book written by Gillian Flynn. Flynn. Yeah. And I think it's starring that name I know is a real name. I think that's the accurate name. Oh, yeah. She, she's written uh, Gone Girl and um, what, Dark Places? I believe so. And the show itself is created by Marty Noxon, who, to segue off of the, the Buffy talk, is the second showrunner after Joss Whedon. And it's starring Amy Adams. So good. Oh, man. There's so like, good. It's like a stellar group of uh, collaborators and actors and stuff. And What a cast. It's a, yeah. good, it's a really cool uh, mystery yes. show. It's a crime show. And it's really character-driven. And... Uh, there's a lot of twists and turns and stuff in it. In just the eight episodes that there are, there's so many twists and turns, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, it's it's so character driven, and it's such a slow burn because they don't um they they avoid some of the more um some of the more cliche trappings mm-hmm. of a mystery show because normally in a, a mystery show, the creator wants the viewer to figure it out along with them. Here, it's more of an experience. It's as if you aren't the detective here. Yeah. You that's not your perspective. You you're someone who this is you you're working on gathering information while something else is happening to you. Mm-hmm. It's it's really unique, I think. It is. It's cool. Yeah. And now we're rewatching The Office both of us and we're only yes. a couple episodes into the first season, but we are laughing our asses off. It's so good. Yeah, it's so it fun. It stays good. Yeah, cuz you know what a- Amy and I the truth is Amy and I love to watch TV and feel emotional about it. Mm-hmm. And I know The Office does get emotional for sure. But where we are right now, it's just such a nice breath of fresh air. It's so fun. There was an emotional moment, tension, at the end of the last episode oh, we watched, though, with Roy. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Pam's fiance. Yes. Bro. What a bro, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, th- that is... Because uh, what's cool about The Office is... Even if there are characters like Dwight Schrute who are a bit uh, extra than someone you'd know in real life, some of the moments that happen in the show are just so painfully real <laughs> in both funny ways and dramatic ways. Yeah. And they handle that, that humor and drama in the same way. You know, And I've always loved that about The Office in that... Um, there aren't really any characters doing bits, you know? It's just they're funny because of who they are mm-hmm. and the, the uh, situation of it all. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, 
But the, that's a long show, though. And unlike Dollhouse, which I watched and finished, Sharp Objects, Amy watched and finished, all, The Office, we have never both finished. Nope. So we're taking the journey. Um, Even after Michael Scott leaves. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the truth is we know what happens in the show. Like, we aren't, like, waiting for a big twist I can't remember if I was just, like, gave up on it because he left or I, yeah. I just kind of, like, dropped off. I faded off because I, 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 for a while, was just buying all the DVDs and then just life happened, you know, mm-hmm. and it was just, it, it, it's a long show. Yeah. But now we're buckled in and ready we're for ready it. We're ready for Eddie. Um, so now I'm going to breeze through some quick comic book news. Um, and if you have any thoughts, just chime in here and there. Um, but one thing I want to talk about for sure is uh, last week I spoke a bit about the importance of licensed comics. And the idea that a licensed comic based on a TV show, a game... That could bring someone new to comics who's never read comics before. And today, there was a new property uh, announced, a licensed comic by someone I know, uh, which I think is the perfect opportunity to bring new readers to comics. Uh, Glow, a series is, a, that is produced by Genji Cohen of Orange is, is the, the uh, New Black fame, is being made into a comic. It, it's by Teeny Howard, and this show I've not seen yet. It looks really good, and it has definitely, it's a popular show, and it has an audience outside of comics, uh, and this was in contention for what we were going to watch next. Yeah. We've talked a, a lot about Glow. It's definitely on our list. Definitely. Uh, it, it's been published by IDW, and it is written by Teeny Howard, who uh, co-wrote Magdalena, which uh, my friend Ryan Katie was writing Nice. On. I didn't yeah. know that. Uh, that was just today that you heard about that? Absolutely, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Actually, I don't even tell Amy. This is how fucking savage I am. I don't even tell <laughs> her what we're talking about. This is fresh off the press. I, I like to surprise her, you know? I wrote this uh, little list to talk about, what, like two minutes ago? Before yeah. the podcast? Yeah. Uh, so, second. One of my favorite books from Marvel, Miss Marvel. Uh, the writer G. Willow Wilson, who has written it since the creation of the character Kamala Khan, at number one, is now leaving. And it'll now be written by Saladin Ahmed. And um, I haven't read his writing before, but I was a big fan of the arc. You know, um, G. Willow Wilson created an amazing character with, with Kamala. She, uh, And there's been talk that Kamala will eventually be one of the main new stars that has the, the potential to be a movie character, a main franchise movie character um i i think that kamala khan is w- one of the most interesting things that marvel has done in a long time so um i'm said to bid farewell as a reader to the longtime writer and i'm excited for a new direction um but speaking of new directions too um have you seen the movie kick-ass yeah all right so <laughs> you know that the character hit girl yes so uh kevin smith is writing a Hit Girl comic. Oh. Uh, Kick, Kick Ass started um, as a comic. It was Kick Ass, Kick Ass 2, Kick, Kick Ass 3, and Hit Girl. And now Hit Girl's coming back as a new comic written by Kevin Smith. Nice. And um, it's interesting to see Kevin Smith on comics that aren't Marvel or DC because he's done some freelancing before. He wrote a uh, Green Hornet comic for Dynamite, but most of his freelance work has been all for Marvel and DC, these iconic characters. And in fact, he has a Batman run that is now incomplete, which I want him to finish. Um, but this is our first time seeing Kevin Smith write a character who has pretty much exclusively been written by one writer before, and that's Mark Miller's Hit Girl. So I'm very pumped for that. Um, and just to finish off the comics talk, to not spend too much time on this right now, because uh, we do maintain that we're the comics podcast that talks about mostly anything but comics. <laughs> um, but I, I read a bunch of books this week, and just some recommendations from me are uh, Killmonger number one, which is the villain from Black Panther. Uh, Killmonger one is written by Brian Hill, and it feels very much in line with the depiction of Killmonger from the movie. And it was really good. It was um, parts of it were so New York, uh, and the, the the voice of the character felt like a, a nice mixture of the classic depiction in the comics. And the depiction that Michael B. Jordan chose for um, his performance in Black Panther. And uh, lastly, in new number one by Kieran Gillen, creator owned, Die. And Kieran, Kieran had the gall to release Die the same day I snapped Flash Hustle. Okay? <laughs> Kieran is my favorite writer in comics right now. Uh, so 
the, the truth is I'm honored to release on the same day as Kieran. Uh, the, the book is amazing. Uh, Die is about, um, it's hard to even say, but it's a group of kids who play a role-playing game and something happens to them where they disappeared for a while and then they meet up as adults and uh, sort of question what happened to them as sort of the same thing happens again. And that is the the way I want to describe it because I want you guys to read it and to be Sounds surprised. Good. It's quite good. It's um, it's one of those books too that you know is the product of passion from reading it from just the way it was laid out. And then in the back, Kieran describes um, uh, the thought process that went into writing the book and that when he was envisioning why he was going to spend time on this book when he was still in the middle of his run on Wicked and Divine, which is his iconic right now creator on book. Um, his the, the theme he came up with was the idea that um, when he was obsessed with fantasy as a kid, essentially to him, part of him entered a fantasy world and never came back. And so now as an adult, he's looking back and examining that part of his life through this comic. So I loved it. I loved it. Um, I need to read more books. Yeah, I mean, whatever you want to read and talk about too, we're down to do it here. Amy, um, I don't have time to read because I'm so tired after freaking Starbucks. Amy has two jobs. I'm thinking she should just have one. <laughs> <laughs> but, Maybe soon. Well, who knows? Um, so now, on to some more pop stuff. Um, Connie and Drake. That was fun. That was fun to watch. Yeah, Kanye one day on Twitter just uh, fucking unloads on Drake. <laughs> and Drake has been going in on Kanye I, all uh, summer. I have to say that Kanye West continues to remind me of myself in so many ways. Can you read some of his tweets? <laughs> I, I don't have my phone on me. No, I'm the phone up right here. All right. Yeah. I want you to read Because he just like... The way he wiles out is the way I like fucking text people and then I'm, I'm embarrassed about. <laughs> Duh. Can you start from, start from the bottom? Hold on. Yeah, start from the bottom here. <laughs> Drake called trying to threaten me. Tweet two. <laughs> the kid he had run on stage at Push's concert is in critical condition. Three. Since the pool line, he's been trying to poke at me and fuck with me. Four. So, Drake, if anything happens to me or anyone from my family, you're the first to suspect. So, cut the tough talk. What an accusation. Christ. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> it just doesn't sit right on my spirit. 4.1K retweets. Just so you know. Next. I got a family and kids. 69 is locked up. XXX is dead. The kid that ran on stage is in the hospital. My, and hold on. Just so you know, I took screenshots. We have, and this is just round two. Kanye started during the day and then came back for some more fucking smoke at night. That's me. I went to bed. <laughs> I woke up to go to the bathroom. I checked Twitter. And this was happening. <laughs> I have one, two, three, four, five. Six. Is it still seven, up on Twitter? Eight. Oh yeah. All right. So go check it nine, out. Nine full page, full computer screen shots. And what was Drake's one response? Just a bunch of devil faces. No, 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 no. Drake posted on uh, on Instagram stories just crying, laughing emojis. My favorite was though the devil faces from the past. Uh, Kanye was really upset about uh, a text he got from Drake. Drake texted him a bunch of purple demon emojis, and Kanye went on a radio interview uh, really upset by this. Perturbed. Saying that he, he that he found out what that means. <laughs> what does that mean to we him? We don't know now? what that means still. Still to him. Um, and then that day, Drake went on Instagram, handling it like a fucking G. And Drake posted a picture of him, a Polaroid of himself, uh, marked uh, with marker. The boy, 666, <laughs> six, 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 yeah, three, three sixes. And then in the description, he just wrote a bunch of fucking purple demon emojis, like a G. And here's Wesley on the video live stream for those watching. See, he, he's okay. He's just, um, you might actually catch him doing his head shake if he doesn't. 
go away. Usually I would like kind of get him out of the way of the podcast, but he had a hard day today, so I'm just going to let him love me. Definitely. I agree. Um, now, going to end up... Oh, yeah. Also, j- just a quick shout out. I-, I can't talk about it much right now, um, but Method Man, one of the best rappers of all time, <laughs> dropped a new album this past weekend. And I just started to listen to it today. It's called Meth Lab 2. It's his first album in, I believe, three or four years. Um, Jeez. And I've heard three tracks so far. Uh, so far, it's a bit feature heavy for me. You know, th- there was the era that Meth was from where every album had so many features. But the truth is, I wish that the earlier songs had a bit more him. You know, like when I hear... Um, my favorite album from Meth is uh, Blackout, which is a uh, joint album by Red and Meth. And um, there's so much of both of them there, you know. And I love getting a, a kind of a featured helping of both Red and Meth there. So I was hoping for a bit more Meth and Man earlier in the album. Um, but I'm just starting out, you know. I'll have more to say on it in the future. Maybe I'll do a, a reaction video. Maybe talk about it here. Um, but we'll definitely be banging that in the car for months to come, you know. Nice. Uh so, last week I introduced a new segment, the Kickstarter of the Week. Oh, that's right. And this one I just pulled up last minute because uh, I want to do ones that, one, support people that I like, or two, baffle me a bit, you know? And I couldn't find one that was that baffling as, um, as the one I mentioned last week, which was the, uh, the, the mouthpiece that you put in your mouth and it brushes your teeth as if you don't have hands. You know, uh, but this week I want that. <laughs> the people look like a horse tune at the bit. Like it was. Remember ah, that like know? mouth exerciser thing that Chris D'Elia was talking about? Oh, jo- jaws are size. Yeah. Do you want that too? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. This uh, where is it? Okay, I, I pulled it up here. It's called Super Super Shetty. Super Sesh. Super Sesh. Sesh is dry in French. Oh, see, you're, you're bringing out some it real knowledge. It means super dry. The t-shirt you can wear for seven days. First of all, why? Seven days. Dude, you could totally do laundry. Listen. With one shirt if in seven I, days. If I have a shirt, right? And I wear it for seven days. Look at their backers, bro. My first instinct isn't, oh, on the seventh day, it's too wet to I wear. judge 1,144 people. It's the, It fucking stinks now. Oh, yeah. We have... <laughs> I chose this Kickstarter because of how many backers it has. It has 1,144 backers. Oh! oh. It, it's addressing my problems, though. It's a seven-day wear, stain, and odor repellent. I'm actually curious. How do they do it? Well, the guy here looks... He... Hmm. No, it's weird. It's starting to look creepy. All right washboard abs in this bitch. All right, so I'm going to play the video, okay? See if we can pick up some of this audio. It's a guy. It's a guy who's, like, waking up. He has no pants on. It isn't a a Kickstarter for pants. (laughs) But he had no pants on. Is it only one color? Black? I think it's just black, yeah. Exceptional comfort? He's stretching like this now. He's so comfortable. It's made in Hong Kong. Oh, he's so smarmy too. Nice IKEA apartment. Extra thin fabric makes it wrinkle free. It has wrinkles literally right now. Extra thin? Actually, it's a good looking shirt. It's a standard black no, shirt. It just looks like every shirt at Target. Moisture wicking system ensures breathability. Oh my. <laughs> he doesn't know how to drink water. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know. All right. I thought that was sweat in the screenshot. No. Oh my god. But he's just pouring a water bottle all over himself, pretending to drink it. It cut to this bit where. <laughs> oh my god. He picks up a water bottle to drink, and he just he goes like this, and he's drinking it, kind of. I do that. He's bathing it. It's it's cascading down his whole shirt. I do that an embarrassing amount of time, like in the car. That, like a Red Bull. Oh, for sure, yeah. You know? That's me, though, when I'm laying down in bed and I'm too lazy to get up to drink. So I find a bottle of water just, and I just, like, pour it, like, horribly into my mouth. Just put him under a waterfall. This is amazing. He's just going in on himself. Here we go. So now, hold now, on. Now he's dry again. <laughs> on the way to hug this girl. He's, he's going to hug her. Always fresh and odorless. She looks like she doesn't even smell him. It's true. 
Her nails are crazy. Oh, he, he's at home taking the shirt off. Okay. Not washing it. Nope. Why oh, we... next day, he pulls the shirt back on. He smells it to make sure that there's no must. It says, wear it again and again without washing. He looks really excited about the fact that it doesn't smell. He, like, laughed out loud. He, he's pumped. He's a ukulele! <laughs> now they're at a sweaty picnic, but he's not going to smell. It's the same girl. Only one person's going to hang out with him. He's spilling, you can't drink orange He's spilling juice. again. He's spilling orange juice now. She looked at him. She's concerned. He's, he said, nah, it's fine. It's like a magic trick. Repels water, orange juice. What no, else? Just orange. Wine, Wine and, and more. more. Okay. Tridimensional elasticity allows for uninhibited movement. Now we see the same girl who... Oh, now, now he's naked. He's naked now. Wait, is he washing it? Oh, I get it. He ran water through it to show that even if it's fucking drenched and you wring it out, it'll be dry soon. Yeah, he's gonna... Yeah, he hung it up. Naked again. They chose, like, the most conventionally attractive dude, too. I bet this guy speaks German. Got some fucking Owl City going. Or something. <laughs> All right. So, would you get this shirt? Who, me? Yeah. No. You do laundry, like, every other day. I do laundry so much. Uh, but If I had one shirt, you'd clean it, like, three times. I will say. I'm not, I'm not going to hate it all. I think it's a fun idea. I think it's a hilarious video. It's interesting. Like I like I said, I I wonder how and I do like I would want to get it as a gift to try to experiment with it, like yeah. just pour orange juice all over it or whatever. Yeah. Uh but I wouldn't buy it, no. It's um they didn't say coffee. That that kind of stands out to me. Um but True. You know what though? Be a good work shirt maybe. I think the shirt looks good. It, it looks to me, like Amy said... They should have different styles. Uh, they're, starting, they're starting Steve Jobs simple, you know? It's uh, it's a simple black shirt. And hold on, let's make sure that we're not talking shit. And, and they don't. He had just one style of shirt. Um, so, Wait, they have underwear? Oh, that's why they, they were showing him almost naked. It's underwear, his too. His whole outfit is not washable. They just didn't show the cascading water down his penis, because that would have been, you know... Now it's porn. Yeah. So... I wonder how repellent it is as far as the underwear Hey, goes. Sarah Iyer from the Purrcast was here. Hi, Sarah Iyer. Is here. Hey. All right, anyway. Um, yeah, uh, this shirt, I think it's cool. Um, I, it, it's a hilarious video. It's, it's a cool name because it's French. Man, the goal was 1279 They've raised $54,582. $54, That's insanely over the uh, goal. Good for them. Yeah. They're balling on their dry budget. They're going to make so many black shirts. <laughs> and they, <laughs> they they have 27 <laughs> hours to go, which means they'll get at least 10K more, I think. Um, wow. So good for them. You know, it's a funny, weird video. I like it. You know, I would um, I would potentially wear one. Someone, uh, I, would, I would just wash it the same, though. Someone send us that, and we'll have a wet t-shirt contest. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, I would wear that shirt, right? Yeah. But it would protect me during the day from any spills. Yeah. Because I spill, but I spill like chunks of food. They, yeah. they didn't show that happening. Uh, <laughs> but I would just wash it like a regular fucking shirt. You know what I would like it for? Because I hate having like sweat marks at work when I'm like working my ass off. Yeah. And I have, and that would probably keep my armpits hella dry. But would it repel like that like white rub from deodorant? Like how, you know? What if with that you don't need deodorant because it says like odor nah. and rip and whatever? Just because the name is French doesn't mean. I'm just saying. But all right, yeah, that um, yeah, I'll include a link in the description. This is gonna be ending around the time that we're going live, but you'll still have some time if you want to get a super super dry shirt. Okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, this is <laughs> this isn't an ad for that at all. This is just us uh, Kickstarter of the week, finding yeah? the most hilarious Kickstarter that I could find this week. Kickstarter of the week. Kickstarter oh, of the week. I want to share about that parrot. 
Oh, yeah, that was cute. Do it. I've seen the article like four different times on Facebook now. He's famous. <laughs> Talk about since it. Since I've showed you. What's his name, Morris? Rocco. Rocco, Rocco, Rocco. Real quick, if you want to look it up, because I love animal news and shit, and yeah. I love animals, and there's an African gray parrot named Rocco, and those parrots are super smart, I guess, and they're really good at learning languages and stuff and mimicking things. And the, uh, he, first of all, he was kicked out of his, well, he had to be rehomed from the place that he was from because, the shelter, because he was using like profane language. So when people would come to visit, he would be like, fuck you, or something like that. Fucking so they're like, oh, Rocco, how dare you? So then one of the ladies that worked at the shelter adopted him and she has one of those Amazon like Alexa things, the, the um, you know, it's kind of like a, a Siri, but in your house. And it's a little speaker thing. And so the parrot created and formed like this friendship relationship with Alexa and started adding things to her grocery list that he wanted to eat and like ordering stuff for himself on Amazon and telling uh, Alexa what songs to play him while she was away at work and they'd just be chatting away, she says, when she comes home from the shelter at work. And I just thought it was so cute. I love it. And I think birds are super crazy. Oh, speaking of, holy shit. Okay, so I don't even know if this is true, but I also saw on Facebook, and it was like a .org, so I'm pretty sure it's true. Okay. There's like a scientist that's working with different colleges, one of them being like Harvard and Yale and shit, in the science department to fucking Jurassic Park style reignite DNA, dinosaur DNA, so that in the next like 50 years or whatever, dinosaurs yeah. are going to be real again and they're going to use birds and like I remodify their DNA. I believe that. Because first they were trying to use fossils and stuff, but then they, they realized that like DNA kind of like in a way expires and changes and stuff. So instead they're going to try and reverse chicken's DNA. They're starting with a chicken. They're going to reverse its DNA because chickens used to be dinosaurs and then the chicken's going to have huge arms and legs and shit. It's going to be really big and the next thing you know, we're going to be in Jurassic Park. So they're going to like essentially R-L. take the DNA, right? Mm-hmm. And de-evolve it. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Um, You, you know what though? But Jurassic Park's hell of scary. Yeah, didn't so you know how that movie fucking went? We you died. Know? They they died in that movie. He still wants to do it, you know? Imagine how cute it would be to have like a little raptor. No, 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 no. That's the one where it wouldn't be cute. Even a little one will rip your shit open. Um, but you know what, though? As a kid, um, I, I went through many phases of addiction to certain movies. Mm-hmm. That movie was one of my biggest addictions. I loved you know who loves dinosaurs. Too? And I would probably, as a kid, go. Stephen Ray Morris. Steven, oh, Amy shouting out Stephen Ray Morris. He who loves is, Jurassic Park. I'm pretty sure he has like a podcast about it. Talking with Sarah Iyer, who was on the podcast, mm-hmm. who, who who chimed in here in our uh, live video. Uh, Sarah Iyer and Stephen Ray Morris run a podcast that we've guested on called The Percast. Yeah. And uh, Stephen Ray Morris also is uh, the what, producer. Mm, I think he's like the sound producer or something along those lines. And he's also like their assistant. and Of My Favorite Murder. Yeah. He's their guy. Oh, yeah. And that that's a great podcast, too. Totally. So speaking of great podcasts, you did a great job today, my love. Thank you. We're done. I love you. I love you, too. Meh. We're getting out of here. See you next week. And, and remember, no fucking outro. You know right. why? We ballers here, okay? No need. We had the intro. We don't need an outro. Fuck it. You finish it, okay? Space. 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 Space between.